If you spend most of your time tediously formatting Excel sheets, what you're about to learn is going to be a game changer. We're going to build four custom Excel templates for charts, themes, worksheets, and even entire workbooks. Best part is you only have to do it once and then you can forget about it. First up, we have custom themes and all companies have their default look. In the case of The Economist, it's the red, while in the case of McKinsey, it's their blue. So odds are your company does too. So let's take a look at how we can customize that in Excel. First, you can see here that we have some data and a chart next to it. We're simply gonna head over to page layout and then under themes here, this is where we do the customization. If we go to the colors dropdown, you can see some of the Excel default ones. But if we go down to the bottom under customize colors, this is where we can change things to our company's color palette. So these accents, the first one is going to be the first blue column. The orange here is going to be the second one and so forth. So you can go over to more colors and under custom, you can change the hex codes to whatever your company's is. In my case, I'm just gonna quickly change it over here just so you can see the differences. So let's suppose that this first one we do in light blue and maybe the second one we do in this red color just so we can see how it changes. We can name it, so you might name it the name of your company. I'm just gonna name it company ABC here and hit on save. Now you can see how the defaults have already changed. We have the heading here as well as the columns and same thing goes with the font. Most companies have their classic font. So let's suppose that we go for Calibri as our font there. Once we've done all of the changes that we want, we want to head under themes and just click on save current theme to make sure we save this style that we just made. Call it whatever you think here and just hit on save. Now, if we open up a new Excel file with control N, you'll notice that once we go over to page layout under the themes, we have the custom theme we just made up here, but it's not the default. Instead, this office one that's highlighted is our default. So to make it such that the custom one is always our default, we first want to just click on it. Then we want to save it by pressing the F12 under save as, and we don't want to save it as an Excel workbook, but rather as an Excel template down over here. As for the file name, we just want to call it book with no digit there and just save it on our desktop or somewhere easy to find as there'll be one extra step. Now, if we go over to our finder, we should be able to find it under desktop and it's called this book, but we need to relocate it. So we can hit on control X and then just open up a new tab and you want to look for a folder called XL start. It should take a while to load. Once you have the XL start folder, just go ahead and paste it in here. And so now whenever we open up a new Excel file, just by hitting control N, You'll notice that we have the new default layout as our custom one. Next up, when you're working with Excel files, you'll often use the exact same worksheet as the default. Maybe it's something like a cover page that you always use for any Excel file. And so instead of having to recreate it every time or copy and pasting, it makes more sense if you just have it as the default whenever you open up Excel. So let's take a look at how to do that. Over here is the cover page that suppose we wanna always have and we just need to change the project name every time. So I'm just gonna create a new sheet and have the cover page in here. Now we just wanna save it by hitting the F12 key and we'll save it as a book under our desktop. And we wanna save it as an Excel template. Make sure we select that and hit on save. Now we need to follow the same steps as before where we simply cut it from here. So control X and take it over to the Excel start folder. Let's delete this default that we had and just paste it in here with control V. And now whenever we open up a new Excel file where we might just hit control N there, you'll notice that it has a cover sheet and it's also got a sheet one, which is the default the way that we want it. If you ever wanna edit some of the defaults, you simply have to go back into that Excel folder, the Excel start and just open up this Excel file for example, you might want to protect this cover sheet so people can't come in and start writing things like the intern you just hired. Now, to prevent this from happening, you just need to go over to the review tab and click on protect sheet. 
We can put a password here, like just one, two, three for now. Hit on OK and re-enter the password, one, two, three. So whenever someone tries to write something here, we get this error pop-up. But if they go ahead and try to write on the second sheet, it all works. So that's all looking great. Now these tricks are just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to how much you can automate with Excel. If you want to take it further with automation though, you'll need to be familiar with macros and VBA. And to do so, you can take our Excel VBA and macros for business automation course. If you're looking to automate data analysis tasks, financial reporting, and spreadsheet formatting, learning VBA will be a game changer for your productivity. In the course, you'll learn the fundamentals such as object properties, methods, and variables. With this knowledge, you'll be able to perform a whole string of common spreadsheet tasks such as auto-generating pivot tables, formatting charts, building interactive input boxes, and more. So if you want to save hours of time from your job through automation, check out the link in the description below. Another awesome feature are chart templates. See, most people have to spend a ton of time to make a chart like this one, which let's suppose is the default for your company, where you have the squares and the light gray shading. Now to do that, you would have to go ahead and select the whole chart, insert, and then select a line chart, and go through a ton of steps to make it similar to this one here. So it's probably not worth having to do it every time, Instead, once you do it once, let's suppose we're happy with this one, you just need to go to right click and save as template. From here, just call it whatever you want. Maybe it's company chart and just hit on save. Now, whenever we open up a new Excel file, let me just first copy this data over here with control C. Now I might go control N to open up a new Excel file. And in this sheet over here, I'm just gonna do control V. Let me delete some rows as well to see if it still works okay there. Then we would just select the relevant area. Let's suppose it's this area over here. I would go to insert. Now I don't want any of these charts. I just want to go to that drop down. And from here under all charts, I want to find my templates. So let's click on templates there. And you can see that we have these custom ones. In this case, let's suppose we want the company chart. Hit on okay there. And you can see that it's managed to create the exact same formatting that we had before with the red and blue and the squares. Many companies only use a select few chart types, so it's definitely worth going ahead and making a template once so you don't have to do it every time. Now, what if you have a few different types of Excel files that you use every week? Like for example, a financial model like this one or a personal budget. If that's the case, it might make sense to save it as a template over here, we have this financial model. So to save it as a template, just hit on F12. And from here, we wanna save it as an Excel template. And you'll notice that it goes under custom office templates. We're okay with that. We'll simply hit on save there. And so now when we go over to file and click on new, you'll notice that we have all of these templates that are the default by Excel. In case you didn't know, they have a ton of different templates for personal monthly budgets, a calendar, and much more. But now we can go back up here and under personal, we should be able to find all of the templates that we've saved. In this case, we saved the financial model. And so now whenever you open up a new Excel file, you can just go over to new under personal and find the template that you created and simply click on create. Awesome, and just like that, in one video, we've learned four tricks that will hopefully save you hours of time. Now, to take it to the next level, you can learn how to use VBA with this video over here, or more extensively by taking our VBA and macros course here. Hit that like and that subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.